isn't it true that, that certain Bible stories become more precious to us when they relate to something we've experienced in our lives? For example, uh, many a once wayward soul takes a lot of comfort in Jesus' parable of the prodigal son. Many people who have gone through an especially difficult or or stormy period just love the story of, of Jesus calming the storm. Many who've endured the loss of a child really appreciate the story of Jesus raising the daughter of Jairus. Especially those words that that he says, the child's not dead, she's only sleeping. And and many Christians in this world who who live a a hand-to-mouth existence can relate to that story of the widow of Zarephath in the Old Testament that involves the prophet Elijah from our first reading. Where even though she had only a, a handful of flour and a little bit of oil, yet by God's providence that flour never was used up, and that little amount of oil never went dry, according to God's promise through Elijah to provide for her. Do you have a story like that in in your life? Maybe a story or two that are extra special to you because, because of how it relates to your life? Well, it seems like the Apostle Paul had at least one story like that. The Apostle Paul is the one who wrote our second reading today from 2 Corinthians. He seems to really identify with really the first story in the Bible, and specifically what happened on the first day of creation, that first story in the Bible. When he hears how God said on on day one of creation, let there be light. Let light shine out of darkness. St. Paul said, that's my story. And he was right. As many of you know, uh, before St. Paul was St. Paul, uh, he was really no saint at all. St. Paul was a Jewish Pharisee who was uh, uh, known as Saul instead of Paul. And he had heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, undoubtedly, but he wasn't buying it. Not buying it at all. And in fact, he not only was a a non-believer in Jesus Christ, but he also made himself into a persecutor of all those who did believe in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that that he actually would get letters of of authority from the high priest in Jerusalem to go and find and and arrest all those Jews who professed faith in Jesus Christ. He was so convinced that Jesus was a fraud and a false Messiah that he was convinced that all the followers of Christ should be stamped out. But, It all changed on one fateful day. He was walking to the city of Damascus in Syria, going for the purpose of capturing and arresting more of the followers of Jesus, when all of a sudden, a bright light shone all around him. And he heard a voice that said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul said, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And that was the beginning of Saul's conversion to Christianity. Before that, the gospel of Jesus had, had been veiled to Saul. The God of this age, the devil, had blinded his mind so that he could not see the light of the glory of of Christ. He was blinded by, by this. His mind and heart were dark with unbelief when it came to Jesus Christ. 
But then, God, in a show of great mercy and love, made his light shine in Saul's heart. He brought Saul to faith in Jesus Christ, gave him, as Paul writes, the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. And just like that, Saul, the persecutor of Christ, became Saul, the disciple of Christ. Saul, the Pharisee, became Paul, the apostle. The non-saint Saul became faithful Saint Paul. You can see, too, can't you, how Paul would have related very well to that event on the first day of creation. Just like in the beginning of creation, there was absolute darkness, absolute absence of light. So also early on, in Paul's heart, there was absolute absence of light. Absolute darkness. No faith. But then God lovingly intervened. The same God who once said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in St. Paul's heart. He created saving faith in Paul's heart and gave him this light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. And isn't it true that, that God has done the same thing in our lives too? Because we're born sinful, we're born without the light of faith in our hearts. Our hearts are dark with the absence of God's light. But then God intervened in our lives and he planted the light of faith within us. God went to work on us. By his almighty power, he cured our spiritual blindness. By his spirit, he unveiled the gospel. He took that veil off that was keeping the light of Christ from penetrating into our hearts. And he planted in our hearts this light of faith that confesses Jesus Christ as Lord. By God's grace, we now have faith that looks to Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. We have faith that looks to Christ's cross and and sees at Christ's cross the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We have faith that looks to Christ and trusts in him to rescue us from every evil attack and to bring us safely into the heavenly kingdom of the Lord. You know, one neat thing about the Epiphany season is, is that there's this emphasis on the miracles of Christ during this time of the church here. We see the things that Jesus did to, to, to show himself as the Son of God. And we see a great one in our gospel reading today, how, how he shined with, with the bright light of the Son of God as an outstanding proof of his divinity. And it's a beautiful time of the church here because we see these beautiful pictures, these beautiful testimonies of Christ's divinity. But I wouldn't be surprised if at times people go away from God's house this time of year a bit discouraged by these readings just because it's easy to start thinking that, well, that, that was great when Christ was around doing those amazing miracles and giving that great proof, but I wish he was around now to do the same sort of things. Same miraculous events. It's great to see him uh, healing diseases or driving out demons or showing his glory as a son of God. That, that would be great if that was happening around us right now. And while, of course, he's not with us in the flesh, Christ is with us in spirit. And he does still heal diseases and drive out demons. He does that off camera, you might say. But let's not lose sight of the fact that he still accomplishes his greatest miracle. He still causes faith to shine in people's lives. He still brings people to faith to see the light of his glory that shines through his face. 
It happens sometimes like a light switch flipping on. It happens sometimes like a slow sunrise. But whether it happens quickly or slowly, the Lord causes his light to shine in people's hearts. And he still works out a miracle among us through his word. So a day like today is a good day to remember this great miracle God works. He works faith in people's hearts purely by grace because he loves people and wants them all to be saved. And so on this last Sunday in the season of Epiphany, during this season in which we see the the glory of Christ shining forth in so many ways, let's give thanks for what he's done in our hearts today. Just as he caused his light to shine on that first day of creation, just as Christ caused his glory to shine on the Mount of Transfiguration, let's rejoice that he's caused his light to shine in our hearts and that we can live by the faith that he's planted within us. Let's give thanks for the gift of faith, the faith that's called to see the Lord's glory. How blessed we are. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.